Okay, Tammy, so you are the president of the Melville Millionaires. What's that like being a, a female president in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League? You know, I started with the Millionaires, I want to say 2010. And I joined to, we just moved to Saskatchewan, we just moved to Melville. And I wanted to get involved in the community. So I went to a meeting and came home with a job. Uh, I started off as a party planner. <laughs> I think it was a more of official like director, but I was in charge of, of the parties. And, you know, kind of progressed from there. Um, Darcy Gettle was the president at the time, and he was just finishing his tenure and Don Melanchuk was taking over. Okay. So um, it was, you know, she was, I want to say that maybe she was the first female president, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. And, you know, just, it was fun. It was exciting. You got involved with a lot of things. And I knew when Don retired that I wanted to be that next. It's, it's fun. It's entertaining. Um, it can be stressful at times, especially, you know, when maybe you're not winning as many games as your fans would like to, but it, it's fun. And, you know, it's very fulfilling and you learn something new each and every day. Now, and you kind of just mentioned something about how it can be not fun if you're not winning sometimes, because I think fans sometimes forget it is a business too. It and is. So it is, it's great entertainment and it's something to be there, but you know, sometimes for you board members, you have to wear a business hat. Is that, it is. I'm sure that has some challenges. Hey, it does. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, it is a business, but we all, are also talking about teenagers, you know, and, and very young adults, you know, 20, 21, 20 is, is the youngest or sorry, the oldest that you can be. And, you know, some of them are turning 21. So that would be the oldest, but they are teenagers and, you know, they're not professional players. Um, it gets tough on them too. You know, we always can't win. It can be tough on their bodies when we have injuries, you know, things get tough and, you know, and, Fans do like to win, but I find that Melville has some very dedicated fans and, you know, we haven't been as successful in the past few years as we have hoped to be, but our fans stick in there and, you know, yeah, they kind of complain or say a few things and, you know, just, they want to win, you know, we all want to win at the end of the day. So we try and, you know, sometimes there's some explanations we can give them. Sometimes we ask, you know, what pointers that they could give us, you know, maybe they might have some ideas, that kind of stuff, but it can, it can be difficult, but it's also, like I said, it's very fulfilling and the engagement and the fan commitment and the dedication. We're very fortunate in Melville, especially for being the size of the city that we are. Absolutely. And, you know, Another thing that you guys have going is you have an amazing facility. I, I know we've talked to the boys about some of the arenas that they like to play in or whatever, but um, that is probably my favorite out of town one to go to because when we walked to that booth, it was like walking inside a hotel and <laughs> the food was amazing. Um, everything like that, like, it was a beautiful place. The people were very nice. You guys have a wonderful facility. You. you know, a lot of these clubs do too, obviously, but um, as someone that was a, an outsider coming, it was a great environment there to come into. So you guys definitely do have the support of that community there. So, first, you know, when I moved here, I moved from BC. Okay. So my very first game that I went to, um, we went as a family. It was Melville playing Yorkton. And it was at the old facility. And I remember sitting in the building and I know it had a lot of history and a lot of stories to tell. But I remember sitting there thinking, I can see daylight through those boards. And, you know, and I was just like, oh, my goodness. But, you know, when when the building was torn down, it, it was it was very historical. And, you know, a lot of memories and a lot of stories were told. But then we had the Horizon Credit Union Center and it was this bright, brand new facility, you know, could hold a lot more people, had um, actual seating instead of bench seating. Yeah. And, you know, and it was it it's when you walk in in there, it's it's a completely different experience. And, you know, it's not just hockey, you know, there's there's figure skating, there's, you know, the banquet facilities, there's all that kind of stuff. And now we're all in one place, 
You know, you can have a wedding and you can have a hockey game at the same time. We, we've had those a couple of years ago before COVID hit. But yeah, like it, it's a really nice building, nice and bright. We just had the lights changed out, um, I believe last year, um, where we didn't have to have, you know, the power down and wait for 20 minutes for it to turn back on. It was just a, a flick yeah. of the switch. So we're very fortunate that way to have the facilities that we do. Absolutely. And like you said, the old arena had history. I had been in that one as well and experienced that in playoffs and, you know, exciting times too for you guys. So as the president, and I know you said Don had done it there before you, but do you feel like maybe there's added pressure on yourself being the president of a club like this, or maybe that pressure is just put on you by yourself? too like do you do you ever feel conflicted with things like that sometimes I I do um you know I'm not um as old or older um I guess as some of the past presidents um or the current presidents or the governors um I'm an import so I'm not originally from Saskatchewan there's that I'm a female um not that anybody's ever made me feel any different but I think for myself too there might be something to prove. And I think for myself more so as I haven't played hockey, I'm a policy and procedures person um, and have a love for the sport. And I felt that I could take it on and, and challenge it and, and take the bull by the horns and go. And, you know, I've had, you know, a good mentor in Dawn. I mean, she's our governor still and Thankfully, she's there and I can pick up the phone and call her with any frustrations because, you know, she's been through it too, right? And That's Lord awesome. knows probably yeah. more because she was there for very many years. Yeah. But I, I think as a, as a female in the league, it's very rewarding to know that I can do this and not have played the game. That doesn't mean that I have the answer for everything. I do have to ask questions and, you know, and tap into people who may have more expertise but everybody's been very kind. And, you know, some people do reach out and ask for advice from me. Um, my background is marketing and communications. So um, I started off at a young age doing that and then kind of got away with that. And in my current real life job that pays, <laughs> um, I'm surrounded by that every day. So I think that's also a benefit for me too. Sure and is. Yeah. And, and I enjoy people and I like talking and making them feel at home and thanking them for coming to the rank and that kind of stuff. I like being, you know, a president that people can talk to on the street or, you know, mm -hmm. in the grocery store, you know, be that point of contact, you know, for anything or a phone call or an email, you know, I pride myself in that. So, and I think a lot of the other presidents do as well, just so happens to be that I'm female and the most of them are male. So I, I like what you said right there about being approachable and things like that and that people talk to you. And I have found that when I stepped in with the Ice Wolves, I found that I had a whole different genre of people who would reach out to me. And it, yeah. it didn't matter the club that they were with or their positioning that they were with. And it was awesome because, yeah, they felt like I was able to speak to them like just genuinely which was nice too um so and you you do you can get messages from all kinds of people so I can only imagine how appreciative everyone is of of you and your um club there and you know I know you mentioned Dawn and I'm sure you guys have lots of other um women who are a key part of your organization we, too we do. I think we're actually a unique bunch. I don't know if you know our makeup, but um, our first vice president is Renee Walbauer. Mm -hmm. um, our secretary is Tara Baduke. Our governor is Don Malinchuk. So, I mean, right there, the majority of us are women at the helm. And, you know, and the guys around the table, you know, they entertain us when we kind of get on our roll about things. Yeah. But, you know, they're they're very good. And I, I pride myself in saying that we have the best board ever because I, I really enjoy our board. Um, we debate, you know, we hash things out at the table, but we're, we're very connected and, you know, and we're a united front. So, and I think that's the most important thing as well too. Yeah, that's very important. Now, do you maybe have any advice for anyone who is, you know, a woman watching any of these clubs play and is thinking, Hey, you know, I'd like to be involved, but 
is maybe doubting themselves that, you know, maybe their similar story where they didn't play hockey, but they have a passion for it. What would you tell that person? Do it. You know, I, I was very fortunate. Renee and I joined at the same time. She was my, my additional party planner. And when I took over um, as interim president before I was voted in, um, I didn't, I told her I wasn't going to do it on my own, that I needed her with me. And I still vouch for that to this day. Her and I are a package deal and she's definitely my right-hand person. Um, Dawn's my left, Tara's, Tara, I always say she's, she's my personal assistant. She keeps me on track and not forgetting anything, but I think you just do it. You know, I, I doubted myself. I doubted my ability. Um, you know, I, I hate to say, you know, hockey's a man's world, but you know what, there's, there's a lot of men and, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of always chalk it up to the, it's the old boys club. And, you know, I think it's changing and it's evolving. And I believe women can do anything that they put their mind to anybody for that matter. And I jumped in and, you know, do I, do I always have the right answer? No, I don't, but I do have really good people surrounding me that I can reach out to and ask, you know, our league president or currently league president, Bill Chow, any of the other presidents, um, governors, anybody like that, everybody's willing to help out or, you know, feed some answers and vice versa. You know, I'm new from a different perspective. Sometimes I look at things a bit differently and maybe can provide them some better insight. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, we all might be rivals on the ice but we're all working towards the same United front on off the ice and that's junior hockey and getting the fans in, in the seats. So. Absolutely. Very vital things. Now you mentioned you're a mom of boys. What do they and your husband think about you as president? Well, I know when I, when I came home and I, I said to my, to my family, I said, I'm going to put my name in to be president. And they all looked at me because I'm, I'm very involved in hockey in uh, Melville minor hockey. I was the chairman of hockey for uh, many years. I'm still involved with minor hockey, but just as a little bit lesser capacity. And I also um, jumped into the major hockey league to help them um, for running their league as well too. So they just looked at me and they shook their head because if I'm not busy doing 5 million things, I don't know what I would do with myself, but they were very encouraging. My husband's like, you know, you can do it. I'm like, I don't think I can do it. And he's like, yes, you can. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. And then I phoned Renee and I'm like, okay, if I do it, you're with me. Right. She's like, yes, I am. I'm like, okay. And you know, Dawn, Dawn's been there every step of the way. And, and, you know, I watched Dawn, you know, go through some, some trying times and some different, you know, things that people don't really want to go through, but in the position that you have to. And Dawn, I would say leads with her heart, but she leads on also past knowledge and experience. And if those are two vital things that I could take away is, is not, I don't always want to lead with my heart because sometimes you can't, but um, not to forget that part too, when, when you're dealing with people. And at the end of the day, and you know, as an organization, we're ran on volunteers. None of us are paid. I mean, our coaching staff and that obviously are paid, but none of us are. And at the end of the day, it's the time and the commitment and you have to love what you do in order to do that. And I, and I definitely love what I do. The millionaires have a special piece of my heart. I, I couldn't, you know, at one point I thought, you know, maybe it was time for me to step down. And before I became president and no, they'll, they'll always be a piece of me. So with millionaires, so that's awesome. I know just from talking to you right now that they are very lucky to have you as part of that Thank organization. You. And, you know, you, you need people who are passionate about their communities and these clubs. That's what, it's what makes them go around. And I think sometimes people forget that, but uh, you're a very vital <laughs> role to that. <laughs> And, you know, and the boys that come into our rank and leave, you know, when they are graduating players Mm -hmm. every year, it gets harder and harder to say goodbye to these boys. And, you know, you hope that, you know, they go on and that a part of the mills will always be with them and that, you know, they'll always remember, you know, where they played hockey and, you know, the town of Melville and, you know, how Melville really loves their hockey and, and loves the millionaires. So it's very rewarding to see them. 
a few of our billets that we've had, um, we keep in touch with. Um, one now is married and has kids of his own. And, you know, we've been along that journey with them and, you know, they become family. And, you know, just as much as, you know, our board members are our family too and our coaching staff, you know, we, we really appreciate everybody that's within our organization and we are one big family. So spend a lot of time together. That's so awesome. Well, thanks for your time. This was wonderful. Thank you for having me. It was awesome for you reaching out.